Production orders are used to manage the conversion of purchased materials into manufactured items. Production orders uh, route work through various work uh, or machine centers on the shop floor. Now, before proceeding with production, most companies typically perform a supply planning uh, typically once a week to calculate how many production orders and purchase orders to execute to fulfill that week's uh, sales demands. Now, just a quick tip in order to demonstrate the manufacturing capabilities, you will need to enable the premium SKU that can be located under the company information uh, window and then opening up user experience and selecting premium. Let's begin. And the process here is to confirm the component inventory availability. We'll then release the production order. The third step will be to update and post production journal and then finish the production order. We'll go ahead and begin. Let's go ahead and confirm the uh, component inventory availability. And we'll do that. Basically, the output will be to generate a, uh, a shortage report, right? So before releasing the firm plan production order to the shop floor, it's you know usually commonplace or good practice to verify that all of the items used by the production order are available in inventory. So I've got my one firm planned uh, production order, and I can open that up. And now checking, I've got this uh, production order, uh, firm planned production order highlighted. I can check the production order shortage list. And when I open up that shortage list, you can see that I have a need. Uh, there are 11 items that are showing material shortage for this particular production order. Now, the reason for the port report is we don't want to put a production order on the shop floor without having those components, all the raw materials to, to build them. Next, we'll add the 11 items, uh, the item components into inventory that are short so that we could, for the production order, and then we'll use that for the item journal. So up at the top of the ribbon, you'll see I'll select journals. We'll go to item journals as a quick way to enter in those 11 items versus having to create uh, multiple separate purchase orders. I'll select on the default journal. And here you see I've got those 11 items with the quantities. And I'll go ahead and post those. Now I have those in inventory. Now I can go ahead and, and release the purchase order. So I'll open up that firm uh, planned production order. And I'll change the status. Now that I have all those shortages completed, I'll change it from firm planned to released. And then I'll select OK. And then I'll get a confirmation message. It says it's been released. And now notice it's out of the tile for firm planned. And now it exists in the released production order queue and is ready to build on the shop floor. Now the production journal combines the functions of consumption journal and output journals into a single journal. Uh, this journal provides a single interface to register consumption and output for a production order. I'll go ahead and select, uh, again, by opening the release production order to report the item components and the work machine center's actual usage and record finished goods into the inventory stock via journal, uh, production journal. Now I'll open up that particular uh, production order. And again, with this item highlighted with my bicycle, item number 1000 highlighted, I could then just select the production journal in order to report that usage. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and for the wheel assembly, uh, that output on that work center, I'm going to go ahead and enter in 100. And then I'll tab over to the runtime and I'll enter in 1750. And again, I'll tab off of that. And then finish specifies, this is the column over on the right side here. Uh, this finish specifies the operation that's represented by the journal line output is finished. Uh, this changes the status in the routing status field to finished on the production routing. So we'll go ahead and select that. And then you'll enter in the, continue entering the appropriate values for setup time and runtime for the remaining three uh, outputs. And once I do that, uh, now that all the consumption and the output has been entered, I could use post to update the actual material and the work machine center usage and the outputs for the finished goods, in this case, the bicycle, into inventory as stock. Just keep in mind that production journal can be opened multiple times 
uh, posting partial consumption and usage of the work machine centers in a production order. Verifying that I do want to post that, I'll go ahead and select yes, and then I get a confirmation that all of that is now complete. Now a release production order finishes when you change its status to finished. So either directly from the PO, the production order, or as part of a batch using the change production uh, status jab. So I'll do that by coming back into the production order. Uh, in the release product uh, production order, the finished quantity now shows here that I've got uh, 150. And these are now ready to sell. And to finish the process, simply change the status and go from released to finished. And I'll select OK. I'll select OK again. And then if I want to look at those finished production orders and get uh, some details around it, I can navigate to the production order statistics and see what my um, expected costs were versus my actual costs. And then the, again, in this, I get a snapshot of the deviation percentage, which is a calculation between actual and standard cost. So the goal of the scenario was just to demonstrate the uh, process here in producing a, a production order. And you could see clearly the benefits of this process in Dynamics 365 Business Central.